So when are we actually going to receive a fourth stimulus check? Okay everyone, so we all know that the American Rescue Plan was signed into law back in March of 2021. And since then, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars were actually sent out. And I know that there are still millions of Americans that are anxiously waiting for Joe Biden in Congress to step up to the plate and send out a fourth check. Now following the past through round stimulus that brought a cash boost to medium and low income families, many people are also worried about inflation. Inflation actually rose at the fastest pace in nearly 40 years. That happened all in December. As rapid price gains fueled consumer fears about the economy and sent President Biden's approval rating tumbling. According to a new Labor Department report, the consumer price index rose 7% in December from just a year ago, marking the fastest increase since June of 1982. That's when inflation hit 7.1%. The CPI, which measures a group of goods ranging from gasoline and healthcare to groceries and rent, jumped 0.5% in the month, the one month period from November. And that is really ridiculous. Economists expected the index to show that prices surged only 7% in December from the three year ago period at 0.4% from the previous month. Price increases were widespread, although energy prices fell 1.1%. On average, gasoline costs around 50% more than it did last year. Food prices have also climbed 6% higher over the year, increased by nearly 40%. So that is why it is extremely important for Congress to send out more stimulus checks sooner than later. Jerome Powell Jerome Powell has already signaled that the United States has new plans to fight inflation. There are multiple lawmakers that are lobbying for another stimulus payment to be approved. There are also many state governors that are looking for more ways to send out more relief checks to their residents. For instance, California is one of the many states that has its own stimulus check. It's dubbed the Golden State Stimulus Check. The Golden State Stimulus Check was sent out towards the end of last year due to a budget surplus, which California then gave out to the most people in need. Now, Gavin Newsom laid out his budget proposal, and it is projected that there will be a mammoth $45 billion budget surplus for the year which means that the state of California is obligated to give roughly $2.6 billion of that amount back to taxpayers. As of right now, it is not clear if there will be a stimulus check like last year for Golden State stimulus payments. Lawmakers are still writing that they urge President Biden to incur recurring payments tied to economic conditions. What this means is that more stimulus payments should be approved. Now, Congress is actually negotiating on monthly recurring stimulus checks. But for some lawmakers who want these checks to only go to a small group of people, that shouldn't be the case. Everyone that needs a stimulus check must get it. And if you are a senior on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, RRB, or VA benefits, then you may be eligible to receive more stimulus money sooner than later. Now, in an effort to safeguard against any future recession, senators and the White House are considering setting up automatic checks for the next time the economy takes another significant dip. The Economic Security Project has already talked with 50 staff members from the Senate's final committee from the Senate Finance Committee on Automatic Stabilizers. This would mean that the automatic stabilizers would be tied to the state of the economy, instead of waiting for Congress to agree to a stimulus bill. An item. Third item I just want to mention is Build Back Better. Uh, I'm sure many of you are wondering what's next for Build Back Better. And I'm not going to hide my frustration with where things are. We need to get as much out of that package across the finish line as we possibly can to make a difference in people's lives. We need to extend the child tax credit, which expired this month. We need to keep those payments coming to the 660,000 families right here in Massachusetts who depend on it for groceries and paying bills and diapers and making ends meet. Um, and we must invest in universal child care. I've said it all along, child care is infrastructure. We need roads and bridges for people to be able to get to work. We need to invest in child care so people can go to work. We need to invest in our child care providers, raise their wages so they have a living wage and can be in the profession they want to be in, and invest in our families to say, if you've got children, we are here for each other. We all want to invest in our children's future. So powerfully important. We're going to be right back at work on whatever it's going to take to get Build Back Better across the finish line. So other legislative things we can talk about, but one other thing I want to mention before I go to questions, and that is a non-legislative thing, canceling student loan debt. 
Erasing $50,000 of student loan debt is the single most effective executive action that President Biden can take toward repairing our economy. What all of us are trying to do, and we've heard it over and over again this afternoon, is fight for working families, fight for justice, fight for the progressive vision that this country and world needs. If this country and if democracy and if decency is in fact going to survive. Uh, and I want to just take a second uh, to make everybody remember uh, and appreciate and take pride in how far we have come as progressives uh, in recent years. We sometimes take it for granted. But as Katrina indicated, uh, I helped found way back in 91, the House Progressive Caucus. And frankly, never in a million years would I have dreamed that it would be as strong and as uh, effective uh, as it is today. And I want to congratulate Pramila and all of the folks uh, in the caucus for the enormously important work uh, that they have done and are doing. And also, and Katrina made this point, is that to the consternation of corporate America, and in fact, the corporate wing of the Democratic Party. We have significantly changed political consciousness in this country. We have to redefine what is politically possible and in fact, what the American people want and what they believe. And here is the simple truth. And that is whether you're black or you're white or you're Latino, you're Asian American, Native American, you're gay, you're straight, you're male, you're female. Poll after poll shows that the progressive agenda, what we are fighting for, is what the American people want. And don't let anybody ever convince you otherwise. Our agenda is the agenda of the working families of this country. At a time of massive and growing income and wealth inequality, and who else but us talks about that obvious fact? The American people do want the big money interests to start paying their fair share of taxes. They understand that it is absurd that two people own more wealth than the bottom 40% of the American people, and that the gap between the very rich and everyone else is wider than it has been in 100 years. They understand that it is unacceptable that huge Wall Street private equity firms like BlackRock control trillions of dollars in assets and have significant influence over hundreds of companies employing millions of workers. In other words, the American people do not like oligarchy and they want us to stand up to the oligarchs. 